Next presenter, Scott Wilson. Actually, uh, honorable members of the Public Safety and Security Committee. My name is Scott Wilson. I'm a resident of New London. I'm a founding member and current president of the Connecticut Citizens Defense League. We are a large Second Amendment rights organization with 2,000 members plus and growing. And uh, I'm here to testify on a, on a couple things today, uh, primarily uh, HB 5245 and uh, SB 196. And my comments on 196 will be brief. Uh, I do think it would be a good thing to uh, basically do away with some of the redundancy of paperwork that that firearms retailers have to have to uh, submit when they sell firearms in Connecticut. It's just uh, it's uh, it's above and beyond. If anybody here has purchased a firearm, they'll know what it's like when they. It's like buying a house practically when, when you walk out of a a, a firearm shop. Um, but back to uh, five two four five, an act concerning. Uh, the application requirements for a temporary permit to carry a pistol revolver. I'm going to also echo uh, uh, Representative Sampson's comments on the, uh, the additional forms. Actually, this, this bill it was very similar to Senate, Senate Bill 967 from last year, and that, uh, that bill died in the Senate. And myself, reaching out to uh, Senator Markley last year, had attempted to have it raised as an amendment with that very same uh, uh, change in language. That, uh, that to do away with forms or form and not supplemented by additional information as required by state statute. I think this would go a long way to help the applicants in Connecticut that want to apply for a pistol permit be able to do so. In Connecticut, uh, I, I receive personally, I receive dozens of emails every month from applicants in Connecticut that are, are just bombarded when they go to certain towns and cities different municipalities with information that are far above and beyond what the state statutes are. And I would think that in today's day and age of electronics databases and background checks that a lot or most of this could be done with. Very simply, the Board of Firearms permit examiners ruled in 2009 that the information to file for a pistol permit, anything above that is not required by state statute. They wanted to reinforce that position. Um, so that is the bulk of my testimony as far as uh, I have no position right now. Our organization has no position on SB 64 or HB 5096. Uh, again, I, I hope that this committee will help this bill move forward with the uh, amended uh, suggestions by uh, Representative Sampson and, my, and myself to, uh, to help further this bill along. Any questions? Th thank you very much, Scott. Uh, questions from any committee members? Hearing none, thank you very much. Thank you.